Welcome, or should I say aloha and happy 2015. And before you ask, yes, these are traditional male and female lays directly from Hawaii. Only the best for you people and of course for this guy, John Swantek. We are here to tell you everything you need to know as we kick off another year on the PGA Tour. It might be the start of a new year, but remember, seven events already in the books with some 40 still ahead of us until someone claims the 2015 FedEx Cup. Never too early to talk about. Now, for those of you that are maybe more into football than golf, my tip for you, seriously, get two screens and you don't have to choose rookie mistake, but this is what happened during the first seven events of the 2014-2015 season. Sang Moon Bay takes the opener in California wine country. Ben Martin cashes in in Vegas. Robert Streb, first time winner as well. Ryan Moore back to back in Malaysia. Nick Taylor wins in Mississippi. Bubba, first victory outside the United States and Charlie Hoffman back in the winner's circle in Mexico. So this is your early FedEx Cup standings. Robert Streb is leading the way. 681 points, Sangmoon Bay not far behind, followed by, of course, the winners that we just discussed from the first part of this season. Now, last season, we saw players like Jimmy Walker and Webb Simpson take advantage of the wraparound schedule and get a head start into the race for the FedEx Cup with early victories. And this season, well, I don't think it's going to be any exception. Strong finishes in those first events allow guys to stockpile points while building momentum and confidence before the new year even begins. One of those guys last year, remember, who benefited from that wraparound schedule, 2013 McGladry Classic winner Chris Kirk. He went on to win in the playoffs of the Deutsche Bank Championship and finished second in the FedEx Cup standings. Definitely gives you a little bit of momentum and a little bit of head start on, on guys that maybe don't play that much. Last year was huge for me, you know, getting a win at the Gladry Classic um, early on in the year and, and uh, propelled me to, to my best every year on the tour. So you see the importance of busting out of the blocks quickly as Jimmy Walker did last year with those three victories, led the point standings for much of the season. And look at that, 27 of the top 30 in the standings through the first six weeks of the season made it all the way to the playoff. Now, of course, it wouldn't be the PGA Tour, and we wouldn't be doing our jobs if we didn't talk about the inevitable huge storylines that are going to happen in 2015. For instance, did you know that Phil Mickelson still has not won a U.S. Open? I was aware. I'd heard of that. And did you know that Tiger Woods is back in action and healthy? I heard rumblings. All right, so let's, let's, let's talk about those two big topics that are going to be discussed throughout all of 2015. Now, the first thing... Will Tiger's back hold up? Swan, what do you think? It's going to be tough. I mean, we saw a glimpse of it at his own event, the Hero World Challenge. He just turned 39. He's had a lot of surgeries, a lot of injuries through the years. So he continues to chase not only for 18, but for 15 major championships. Can he get 15 this year under the tutelage of his new swing coach, Chris Como, who's been the fifth swing coach he's had, in fact, since 1996. Yeah, and of course, Como is more of a swing advisor at this point. Tiger's kind of taking control and ownership of his swing changes, which I do think is going to give him the confidence that he really has needed. He feels healthy. You saw it at his own event. He was obviously sick because this guy cannot catch a break. He had the flu. But when you saw his swing, it looked like he was very much pain-free, and hopefully that doesn't stop. So I think if he remains pain-free, if the back holds up, you are going to see major 15 happen. So Tiger struggled with injuries last season. Phil Mickelson had struggles of his own, not stepping into the winner's circle, but maybe most surprisingly, notching just one top 10 finish, and it came late in the season at the PGA Championship. But of course, in true Phil Mickelson style, he was trying to go on to notch his first win, not just his top 10 falling just short. But uh, take a look at this, really surprising. World Golf Hall of Famer, just one top 10 in the season, had more withdraws than he had top 10s, earning $2.16 million. This was his worst season total in his career, so it says a lot. But the good thing when you talk about Phil Mickelson is historically when he has a bad season, he bounces back with a tremendous season. The last time he had a really bad season, came back and won two times the next year. So Phil Mickelson is gonna be a story we keep track of, and of course, it's never too early to start talking Phil in the U.S. Open. Six times a runner-up at the one major that has to this point eluded him, and if he were to go on to claim the second major of the year, he would become the sixth player in history to earn the career Grand Slam. Or maybe the seventh. There's a little tournament in Augusta, Georgia in April. Rory McIlroy trying to win a major of his own that would target that incredible achievement mm -hmm. as well for Rory bringing him the Grand Slam and the Green Jacket as well. I'm sure he would not mind that at all. Rory McIlroy heads into 2015 on top of the World Golf Rankings. All eyes will be on the Irish phenom at the Masters as he looks to become the second youngest player to earn the career Grand Slam at the age of just 25. 
So Rory walked away with Player of the Year honors and Billy Horschel, while he walked away with FedEx Cup. Won two of the last three legs of the playoffs, in fact, and Horschel showed us that being fiery and fearless can pay off big time in this game. And we also saw how Horschel answered the huge challenge of finishing strong, but as we begin a new year, we have a new question. Will he be able to continue that incredible play? The goal I'm making known is I want to be the first guy to win the FedEx Cup. No one's done it, so um, that would be the pretty cool to be the first guy to do that. History has proven defending the FedEx Cup title is a tough task. Take a look at the past FedEx Cup champions beginning back in 2007. No one has successfully reclaimed the cup and very few have even made it back to the Tour Championship the following year as the reigning champ. All right, so just like it's never too easy to talk about Phil in the U.S. Open, it's also never too early to pick our FedEx Cup winner. Okay, maybe a little too early, but we're going to do it anyway. So, Swan, I'm going to leave the stage to you. Oh. Who are you going with? That's kind. Oh, you're um, welcome. Someone we haven't mentioned yet in the program, mm -hmm. Mr. Jordan Spieth. Love the way he finished the 2014 calendar year, yes. winning in the Australian Open in a runaway, winning Tiger's event in a runaway. I think he's got an innate ability at the age of 21 to win, even when he doesn't have his best. And I think he'll have his best for much of 2015. I like Spieth. He would be the youngest FedEx Cup champion ever. And that is the key. You hear a lot of analysts talk about it. If Spieth is able to improve his play when he's not playing at his best, that's what's going to make him unbeatable, unstoppable. We'll see if he's able to continue on. I am going to go with a guy that we talk about so often. It's surprising he hasn't won more, but he's been struggling injury a lot. Jason Day. I think if Jason Day can remain healthy this year, he is so long off the tee. He is so great around the greens. This is a guy we saw win against Victor Dubuisson, where he looked like no one was going to be able to beat him with those golden hands. Jason Day, I think if he stays healthy, you're going to see a multiple win season. And it's all going to end with him at the Tour Championship at Coca-Cola, placing the cup, and you're going to owe me an apology. And your boy Jason Day in the field for the first event of 2015 starts this week. In fact, Friday start, Monday finish, Hyundai Tournament of Champions out in Maui. Aloha. Aloha.